your story around how you're helping people kind of make it through this and, and adjust, I think, I think is, is important to share. Um, it's different. I know that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're opening your home to have right. you come in. Um, you're, you're allowing, like, you're creating a workspace. Totally. Um, and, and that's, that's pretty unusual. I, I would say so. And like, you know, we were even debating when this most recent guy came down here, his name's Mark and he just like walked into, but when he came here, we were saying like, one, do we have enough space for him? And we talked about this about two weeks ago and we said, um, we probably are going to be on top of each other, but we were also still kind of building up a home office at the time because like traditionally I love going into the office. Like I, I'm more of like a face to face type. Like I have a team that's in Alpharetta and I want to make sure that I can like see these people on a regular basis. But with him, I was like, I was like, hey, like I don't have like a firm bedroom to give you yet. Like Mark, you want to come on down? <laughs> and so Mark comes on down, basically takes the guy's spot. We had a one week interruption. That was it. But but yeah, we're not not charging rent or anything. It's more of just like you know, like we want the company, and honestly, I think it's mutually beneficial. He's an entertaining guy, and he has the same kind of focus and kind of work ethic we do. So it's like we're not going to like take any like hits there, but. Or just to have like company and you know be around people we like during uh, so your so your hack on getting through this is has been to open your home pretty much I'm type A create like a live in office where you guys can just you know collaborate you know be connected and and, and build on each other yeah and James I'll say from a business perspective um, you know I think we're all adapting working from home and like it's, it's different like getting on webcam and seeing someone's dog behind you or something like that or like I love the, it. <laughs> or yeah or someone's like kid like yelling yeah, at the point. oh yeah very yeah, yeah. great but um, I'll tell you our our clients at least in the space that we're in is very much like high tech big data like cloud service providers that's like who we're working with and I think it's right up the kind of like cultural alley so to speak when you pop up in a webcam, like, hey, David, who's that guy behind you? I'm like, oh, that's Michael. And I said, Michael's already onboarded to this account, actually. In fact, he works my team. And they're like, oh, are you guys not social distancing? I'm like, no, we live together. It's a think tank for all things security compliance. <laughs> and then it's like, they eat it up. I mean, it's like, it's totally off the wall, but you know, it's, it's part of being in this like time of your life as well. And like taking advantage, obviously, of the fact that we can't go anywhere, so might as well try to stay productive kind of through a more of a collaborative environment so we can kind of bounce off each other. So like, what do you think either small businesses or large corporations should tactically do now and then and be thinking about? I mean, obviously, we can't all have our teams move in with us, which is totally. a big thing. <laughs> I mean, be- talk about team culture, though. And we all- <laughs> We also joke though, because um, you know some of us outrank each other technically on a org chart, and uh, I'm just like, from nine to five, we're professional. Like outside of those hours, like anything goes. <laughs> like there's a flat org chart again. But um, you know, I was talking to my dad as well, and my dad's a small business owner. He owns um, a collection of all state agencies uh, in the Atlanta area. And um, you know, one of the things we we're saying is like, we need to start thinking now that this work from home thing not only is going to be more longer term, like just in case, like you know, the we don't flatten the curve, whatever. But I said, even after this, like we're proving concept right now. Like the biggest transformation and like work from home, like we've ever seen. Like this is the new like open floor concept, <laughs> like kind of fad that's going through in the moment. And we we've been challenged. I'll tell you this. In my my specific team, I have 15 people. And of those 15 people, 14 have been with the company in my practice for every year and a half. So we have some tenure, so to speak, like low attrition rates, we're, we're fortunate there. But we also onboarded a brand new college hire um, on March 23rd. Oh, and wow. that was like right as the like, kind of outbreak was happening in terms wow. of Georgia. Yeah, I mean, we were going work from home, like all offices are shut down, everything. We mailed her a MacBook. And you know, now we, we have face-to-face uh, video conferences for her first week. She's on her second project this week, like, you know, spinning her up really quickly. And what we originally thought was going to be a negative has actually turned a positive because now we have structured meetings all over her calendar. And anytime we would typically, and you've been in consulting too, typically when you're bringing like a brand new kind of hire into a consulting engagement, they want to know, hey, are they hitting my code? Like, are they charging hours to me? Because this is not a learning curve project. Like, I'm not paying for her trainings, that type of thing. I'm like, it doesn't matter now. We're all just on, she's shouting a video conference. Anyone can join the meeting. And so I think it's been good in that sense. And we're also able to do it more in a centralized manner. 
So like, I'm honestly more of an advocate for work from home now. Now, I, I don't think that we're all gonna be able to go permanently virtual, but previous to this, we were saying probably about three days a week in the office, that was kind of required if you weren't traveling. Like now I'd say probably air on the one a day per, oh, sorry, one day per week, kind of like office cadence. Right. Um, and my, I was talking to my dad too, and he has a walk-in Allstate agency. And I think uh, just from that, he's saying like his two like full-time employees, he's telling them they can go from five days in the office down to two Mondays and Fridays. Wow. And I, I was like, dad, don't tell them that yet. Like, why don't you like test it out a little bit? Like, <laughs> let's get back from this. I said, before you just like put this like character in front of them. But he says, yeah, they're equally as productive, but not more productive. He says, they don't have to commute as much. One was commuting an hour and a half to the office. And now if she uses that time. She still gets online at 8.30 a.m. And like, you know, they're able to like have uh, the type of meetings they're safely on the phones, whatever it is, um, just that much earlier because the commute is now reduced. And I think you, you highlight a couple of great points, but like the, the lack of commute, I think some people are, you know, some people are missing it because they are, they're not calling and connecting with people that, on the personal level, right? Because just maybe their home life is at a certain speed and then their professional life at a certain speed that they're, the only downtime they have is in the commute. But I think you're, the productivity thing is super interesting because I, I know I and I, I know many, you get on a call and there'll be at least one person that's in transit. And, you know, and like, they really matter and you really need their focus. And you're like, I don't know if we're getting the, the full decision power here that, that I know you're capable of. Um, and now. I, I that too, yeah. And um, I'll tell you this, like one thing that we did our first week and a half working from home, it was at my dining room table downstairs. And um, we, we had this empty bedroom and we would always point at this saying this was going to be the home office. And I think it was about a weekend. We were just like, I cannot, like, for the sake of my back, I can't sit at the dining room table anymore. I said, we need a standing desk, like, just like we have in the office. And, you know, some, some workplaces let you go into the office, kind of like one of those, like, final days, like, go pick up some, like, kind of, like, furniture and equipment if you needed it to, for, like, long-term stay at home. And uh, I don't think we took advantage of that enough. <laughs> so we got on Amazon, found some, like, $300 standing desk, and we said, all right, this is an investment. We're going to do this now. But that turned into buying a Jabra, that turned into, you know, making my QC35 headphones here, like all the above to really get the full setup. And it's just like, you know, you have to make it comfortable, but also I would say the other thing, like tips work from home is separate it too from like the rest of your house. And especially if you can, right? Like I, I realize not everyone has that type of square footage, but like we have that advantage here. It's like, get that home office out of the way. This is literally another bedroom. When we're done with the work day, we close the door to it. And it's like, it's segmented from the rest of our lives. So we don't feel like we're like living on top of our workplace. That's a psychological tip there, I'd say. I love that. It's, Cause it's a hard stop, right? It's like, you go full speed and then it's like, we did it, move. Very much, yeah, you have to. Otherwise, I, I think the burnout is more there because you feel like your email is so close to you. And heck, we live with other employees. So I mean, maybe we're a little bit more accustomed to it at this point. We've been doing it for over two years. But um, it's it's still something that you have to kind of create boundaries. Otherwise, like, we'll, we'll also kill each other. Okay. So, well, I appreciate it.